Hi guys, welcome back. We're jumping into the first of our four novels on our syllabus, uh, James Bradley's Clade. And also, we're also looking at the IASS white paper, The Dystopian Impulse of Cli-Fi, which is a wonderfully moody title. But I think some of the big ideas of this white paper are gonna uh, trickle down to the rest of our conversations throughout the course, especially considering how Cli-Fi acts as a kind of uh, mirror to our cultural anxieties. I think all postmodern writing kind of holds up, whether it's in a serious or an ironic way, a kind of mirror to the culture that produced it. Um, if we think about every generation or even every decade having a kind of uh, lightning rod uh, cultural topic, um, postmodern art, whether it's, it's film, whether it's music, whether it's artwork, whether it's, it's, it's literature, um, takes both serious and also mocking uh, views on how as a culture we are adapting to and running from and ignoring uh, elephants in the room. Um, especially when we go to extremes of, of, of believing the worst or believing the best about uh, our culture and our future and our actions. Um, in Cli-Fi, I think there is a lot of this sense of cultural anxiety. As uh, Raymond Williams, the theorist, is cited in one of the uh, later parts of this IASS paper, the structures of feeling, how um, the principle suggests it affects uh, the FX emotions and feelings are not only individual cognitive and psychological events, but also intricately connected to the social and historical world. What we can think about is when cli-fi uh, is set in a future time, a future earth, whether that's 50 years or 200 years in the future, um, this, this futuristic time, this setting, this place in a world that's being ravaged by climate change or in a world that's falling apart at the seams thanks to the impacts of the natural world on the people left, right? It takes away the kind of pointing finger saying, look what you've done to the uh, reader, to the audience. And yet the content, the narrative uh, is meant to force a reader to ask themselves, is this a world that I am comfortable having my future generations inherit. Uh, in fact, in Clade, I think that comes up in the first chapter, that kind of existential and moral uh, and ethical conundrum. Should we even bring a child into a world that's so clearly, um, you know, gonna unravel at the seams? And, and as we see as the rest of the novel, that sort of, that takes shape in many different ways. This sense of if we know, even if we're not doing anything about it, if we know that climate change is gonna be the ultimate decider, um, do we have a responsibility to not uh, put our innocent children and grandchildren at grave danger? Um, and I think that's going to come up in a number of ways in the text we read. Certainly in, in Clade, it's going to pop up in its own way in Gold Fame Citrus and California. Um, those novels certainly deal with this idea of future generations and, and children and what they inherit and what they are um, exposed to. And it's asking readers to consider those worlds not just as escapist fictions, but as potential worlds, thanks to the culture that we are leaving for them. The, the cultural, social, economic, political inaction. Um, and that's where I think we can touch back on what Jameson was saying in his uh, essay about utopian, uh, the utopian ideal is kind of a dead idea thanks to late capitalism. Uh, many of you picked up on this, uh, the, the part of, of his essay talking about Walmart. Uh, Walmart is the behemoth that is uh, exploiting its workers and, and, and causing all kinds of harm. And yet, as a culture, we are incapable of not shopping there. Um, so even though we know it's a destructive force, we are either unwilling, incapable, or even unable uh, to stop supporting that thing. Uh, you know, in five years, we'll be talking about Amazon in the same way, or Uber, or McDonald's, or any number of massive global corporations that are doing what capitalistic uh, enterprises do, and that's make money the easiest and cheapest way they do. And that's not an indictment on capitalism, that's just a way of saying, we have a lot of um, hypocritical attitudes toward things that we both benefit and support and yet mock, right? Um, and I think cli-fi, all speculative fiction, all even sci-fi, uh, offers a chance for those kinds of uh, juxtapositions and hypocrisies to become part of conflicts and narratives. And certainly I think that pops up in Clade in its own ways. 
Um, this I, the, the questions of, of parental responsibility, the questions of, of social uh, breakdown, the questions of um, where do we go next when we know the worst is on the horizon? What do we do? What are we obligated to do? What are we shirking our responsibilities toward? Um, I'm going to upload a, a couple of PowerPoints over the next few days. One of them talks about some of my favorite uh, 80s and 90s and even 2000s uh, sci-fi um, in a way that I think connects with the, the, this principle of cultural anxiety coming through sci-fi. Uh, one of the examples I give is one of my favorite movies called They Live, John Carpenter's um, extremely terrible and yet so fun, fun to watch movie about a man who when he puts on a special pair of, of Ray-Bans he can see aliens that are living among us and brainwashing everyone else through all kinds of media. If you have a chance, I mean, go watch it. It is terrible and yet so fantastic. Uh, also talk about Alien Nation, a forgettable movie, but the same kind of idea. Um, these films, while silly and, and ridiculous, they also have a great sense of, of weight to them when it talk, considers uh, social and political and cultural um, problems of the era, right? Um, same is true in our fiction. Um, the authors of the text we're looking at now, I think, even though they're writing, you know, strange and 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 even at times uh, uh, um, adventure-based stories, there's still a lot of questions that we as readers can ask that connect with the theory or even the concerns of our culture now, especially in ways that depict a future world. Um, that is not a Star Wars universe, is not a Star Trek universe, and it is in fact much more dystopian in its depiction. It's much more collapsed, it's much more uh, chaotic, it's much more violent, and it's much more uh, splintered than any kind of social and political world that we as Westerners are comfortable with. And it's that discomfort, that decentering of, of awareness or of familiarity that these texts also have a lot of power in how we understand and then interpret and then even digest um, associations that we can make today about a text set in the future, whatever that future might be. All right, so uh, I'll be posting more videos. I look forward to our conversations. Uh, as questions come up, please let me know. Keep up the awesome work with your comments to each other. Uh, keep up uh, making some important questions and connections and leaps between the theory and the narratives. I look forward to uh, working with you some more, and I'll see you next time.